what's what's the practical use of something like this? Well, it means that you can do kind of cool animations. I don't know if you can see it with the backlight on here, but here's an example of a bar of eight LEDs that I have that's just kind of, this is a program that my daughter wanted me to, to write up. It's just kind of a rainbow that cycles through. You can kind of see it's green at the top, then now it's blue and went up to red. And so the rainbow is just kind of falling down the, the row of LEDs there. Um, and you can you can set individual colors on any of them. You can use them to do animations, do artwork, do little projects. Um, or in my case, you can do some very functional things with them. Uh, I have, whoop, hey, it powers off on this one. Trust me, this is a clock and it looks really <laughs> cool when it's powered up and I'll get it powered up in a second. Right, uh, the, the very cool thing about this is because they're all connected serially, you don't, there's no, complicated wiring. As long as you can connect the digital pin on one LED to the digital pin on the next, you'll be able to control each and every single one of them in an array, assuming that you know what position in that strand that LED is. Oh, uh, okay, Smitty, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I understand the way that WS2812 works. Let's say I have something like this. This is a, a pixel stick. This is, I actually purchased this from Ready to Fly Quads. So it's eight WS2812 LEDs uh, in in a in a series, I would create an array of eight values, and those values would include the color and the brightness. And then I would use my controller. In this case, I'm using an Arduino to push that array through the stick. And every single LED that that uh, receives that signal, it takes the one that it gets, and then it passes on the rest. And so you can you can go down the entire line, assuming you know how big that strand is. Correct. So the, the way it works is you have, um, you start sending data. So your microcontroller starts sending out data and it's one byte per color for each of the LED. So the first LED says, hey, I've been quiet for a while. There's no data. Data has started. All right, I'm going to take the first byte and that's going to be my, it's actually green, red, blue, which is kind of annoying, but it takes the first byte and says, that's green. That's the value I'm going to use for green. Then it takes the second byte. That's the value I'm going to use for red. And it takes the third byte, and that's going to be the value it uses for blue. And it consumes those bytes, and it does not send them out. But any data after that, without a pause, any data that comes right after, immediately after it, it will just send out of its data output pin. If you take that data output pin and send it to the next LED, then the next LED says, oh, it was quiet before because it didn't hear those first three bytes, but it hears the next three bytes and it will consume those three bytes and anything that comes after it just gets passed down the line. And so the first LED in your string sees all of the data, but it only consumes the first three bytes and just passes through everything else. Then the next LED sees everything except the, the data for the first LED, consumes the next three and passes everything else. And so if you've got a string of eight of these things, you will end up sending 24 bytes down the wire. The first three will get consumed by the first LED, the next three by the next LED, so on and so forth. And when you get down to the last LED, all it sees are the three bytes for it, and that's it. It doesn't see anything else. Then you have to pause long enough at the end of the, the, the whole array so that the first LED says, oh, there's no more data, I'm stopping. Now the next data that I will see, I will start consuming again. And in that way, you can individually address every single LED, but it does mean that you need to output data for every single LED on the chain every time you try to update it. 